Up until this point, we have been making all of our transactions over HTTP via a remote node. But if you are doing any kind of serious Ethereum development, you are probably going to want to run your own node that you have full control over. Now, the Ethereum yellow paper is a mathematical specification for the Ethereum protocol, but it says nothing about which specific programming language that the individual clients have to be implemented in. And because of that, there are multiple client implementations for Ethereum right now. The most popular ones are Geth, written in the Go programming language, Parity, written in the Rust programming language, CBP Ethereum, written in C++, and then Pi Ethereum, written in Python. But there are also teams working on Java and Ruby implementations as well. And there are good things and bad things about having multiple client implementations like this. Satoshi is on the record as saying that a second Bitcoin implementation would be a menace to the network because a disagreement in the nodes could lead to a chain split. And in fact, that's actually happened in Ethereum before, back in November when a bug in Geth broke the consensus on the network and it completely crashed the price of Ether for a while. But there are really good things about having multiple client implementations as well. For example, it can catch bugs a lot faster. And that Geth issue in November was resolved within minutes, whereas that could last you know, for a significant amount of time if you only had one implementation. Also, it decentralizes the development teams. And if you follow Bitcoin at all right now, you know that the political power of the one team that builds the Bitcoin core client is a major issue for many users. So having that kind of decentralization of developer talent is a really good thing for the network as well. Right now, if you go to ethernodes.org, you can see that Geth is currently the most popular Ethereum client right now, with Parity and the C++ Ethereum client slowly gaining market share on it. But because Geth is still the most popular Ethereum client, I'm going to use that for the next batch of these tutorial videos. I'm also going to create a new virtual machine for these videos. Now, because we're in the wild, wild west here, not everything Ethereum related works perfectly across Linux distros. For example, I've had trouble getting Geth to run properly on Red Hat Enterprise Linux before, but from my experiments, I found that using Ubuntu seems to be the best Linux distro to use for Ethereum development. So we're just going to use Ubuntu for the next segment of these videos. So I'm gonna spin up a new Ubuntu instance. Again, the, the actual CPU usage doesn't really matter that much. I'm just gonna give it something somewhat big, um, just to make it go faster. So I'm gonna use a C3 large network availability zone. I don't care about that, but I am going to add um, some disk storage to this. I'm gonna add 64 gigabytes of disk, disk storage because we are gonna be storing the blockchain and we are gonna need you know, some amount of disk storage in order to do that. If you're just using your local laptop, you should be fine. The Ethereum blockchain is not actually that big right now. So it should be fine for now. So configure security group, and then I'll review and launch this instance. And I'll use an existing key pair that I already have. Grab the URL and then I can SSH into it by doing SSH-I and then the path to that chem pem file. And then I'll use the username Ubuntu at, and then the do domain name of the instance. And I have to actually wait for this to spin up. So just give it a second. And now I can SSH in, and now I have my new Ubuntu instance and we're ready to go. Now, all of these installation scripts are gonna be on GitHub. So I'm gonna kind of breeze right through it, but we're just gonna need to install a couple things. And then we need to run apt-get install Ethereum. And then if I do which geth, you'll see that I do have the geth executable installed in my user binary files, and that is good. Something else I can do now that I'm running on Ubuntu is install that C++ Solidity compiler that I didn't install in the previous video. So we can do it with sudo apt get install solc, and I'll say yes. And then if I do which solc, you'll see that I also have a executable file to the Solidity compiler. I'm also going to install Node.js. And I'll see that I have that. And then finally, I'm going to install Tmux. Now I'm going to run the command geth. Just like that, no, nothing else installed with it, and it's gonna run a bunch of stuff, and then I'm just gonna hit Control-C to exit out of that, 
And I'm just going to do a simple lsla just to make sure that this dot ethereum file folder, sorry, was created. And if you see this dot ethereum folder created when you run the command get, that means it's installed properly and we're ready to go to the next videos.